Welcome to Watch Mojo and get ready to embark on a nostalgic voyage through time as we delve into the realm of things that don't exist anymore. And we're starting with these obsolete stores. The Warner Brothers Studio Stores, a dazzling shopping environment that embodies the magic of the Warner Brothers Studio family. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 stores that don't exist anymore. For Borders, it is, yes, the end of the story. For this list, we'll be looking at retail outlets that were once the pinnacle of your shopping experience and are now a faded memory. Have you ever shopped at one of these places? Number 20. Sports Authority. Like many retail outlets, Sports Authority was a casualty of the mid-21st century. Founded in 1928 by Nathan Gart, a series of mergers and acquisitions allowed Gart Sports to become the place for sporting goods in the United States. But by 2010, the tired retailer found it difficult to compete with the likes of Walmart and Amazon and began falling behind in its financials. By 2016, the company chose to close down and liquefy its assets. The clock has run out for Sports Authority. The sporting goods retailer plans to begin going out of business sales as soon as this Friday and will close all 463 stores by the end of August. Its brand name and intellectual property ultimately ended up in the hands of its competitor, Dick's Sporting Goods. Sports Authority has gone bust, as you know, and when they went bust, they did something that's so common now with failing retailers. They sold off all their dossiers on people who ever shopped at Sports Authority. Number 19, Wet Seal. If the 2010s taught business anything, it's that the shape of retail shopping is changing. Founded as Lawrence in 1962, this fashion retailer was incorporated as Wet Seal in 1990. They also sold their clothing and accessories under the Arden B and Blink brands. By 2015, they were faced with heavy competition, forcing them to close several locations. Orange County retailer Wet Seal is drowning in debt, and now employees accuse the company of leaving them high and dry. Hundreds of Wet Seal stores were suddenly shut down today, leaving thousands of workers jobless. Store windows could be seen with protest signs from employees over communication from managers and compensation. Wet Seal closed all stores in January 2017, another victim of the so-called retail apocalypse. This is just another sign of tough times for retailers. The Limited, Sears, and Macy's have also announced closings this year. As of January 2023, their website still says under construction. Number 18, Tower Records. Long before the days of Spotify and Apple Music, people had to go into a store and purchase their music. Tower Records came to San Francisco when the city was at the center of the music world. It was opened in 1968 by Russ Solomon, who wanted to expand his family's Sacramento music store. Enter Tower Records. In their heyday, they were one of the largest retailers of music around the world. Based in the US, they spread to over a dozen countries worldwide. The movie Empire Records was even inspired by Carol Hakenin's time as an employee there. What you doing, man? I'm exercising my veto, man. It's only 9 o'clock. I mean, you sure you want to do that? Mark, listening to this crap is guaranteed to make you sterile. Okay, maybe I want to be sterile. Yet, with all that success, bad business decisions and the launch of the digital music era killed off this giant in 2006. A changing music business, the advent of being able to get music through your computer, on sites like Napster and iTunes, doomed the record store along with Tower's overly aggressive expansion. The brand did resurface as a website in 2020 and continues to sell music and merchandise online. Number 17, Comp USA. When you hear the term big box store, you may think of IKEA, Walmart, or even Costco. One such player in this space was the now defunct computer store, CompUSA. All across America, computers are changing people's lives, and one company is changing the way people buy them, CompUSA, with the brands you want all at guaranteed low prices. A purveyor of technology products, they were very similar to competitors like, say, Best Buy. And therein lies part of the problem. CompUSA employees were told of the sale at a meeting this morning. The company had been losing money against competitors like Best Buy. Their corporate strategies were out of touch, and they were destroyed by the competition. 
They were eventually sold to Systemax in 2008, and their last CompUSA stores were rebranded as Tiger Direct, which also phased out of retail in 2015. Tiger Direct is a top 25 online retailer with over 200,000 products and retail store locations. Number 16, KB Toys. It was 1946 when brothers Harry and Joseph Kaufman opened their own candy store, aptly named Kaufman Brothers. I'm a kid and you're my toy store. You're easy to like, cause you're just right. You're my friend, KB. That quickly turned into a wholesale toy company in 1948 and a shopping mall staple in 1973. In the 1990s, a series of additional acquisitions brought the company hundreds of new store locations, totaling 1,324 by 1999. In creating the new KBKids.com, we went to the experts. They know what's hot. Now you can too. They know exactly what's right for them. But a combination of both a poorly timed dividend deal in 2002 and a drop in sales the following year sealed the company's fate. Neither a bankruptcy filing or a restructuring of the company was enough to keep it afloat. The company had been looking to liquidate more than 100 stores across the country. The closing was a disappointment to this dad who's been coming to the store over the last two decades. This is one of the better ones, so... Kind of sad to see a goal. They were eventually sold to their biggest competitor, Toys R Us, in 2009. Number 15, Warner Brothers Studio Store. In 1991, Warner Brothers entered the retail space, selling the likes of Looney Tunes and DC Comic Books merchandise. Eventually opening 130 stores across the country, the chain thrived for a short time. It's been an incredible ride so far. The studio stores have been one of the fastest and most successful retail store ventures in history. Successful beyond anyone's most optimistic projections, including mine. However, the AOL Time Warner merger was completed in 2001, and the newly formed company had new plans. AOL's acquisition of Time Warner cost over $160 billion, making it one of the largest mergers in history. At the time, it seemed like a really good idea. With sales in decline and retail shops floundering in general, the newly formed conglomerate saw the writing on the wall. It took them less than a year to put the nail in the coffin on this chain when their last store closed on New Year's Eve 2001. Well, that's all, folks. Hey, well, that's my line. Number 14, Payless Shoes. Much like many of the other stores on our list, Payless started with humble beginnings only to fall victim to our ever-changing times. But you can get these same shoes at Payless for $19.99 or lower with our epic holiday deals. Why pay more when you can pay less? Formed in 1956 by cousins Louis and Shell Pozes, Payless became known for its unique line of shoes called Pro Wings, as well as a plethora of other footwear-related products. Now all $9.99 sandal and canvas shoes are just $8.99. Two pair, $7.99 each. Three or more, $6.99 each. At the Payless Shoe Source Buy More Payless Sale. But in the midst of the retail shift in the 2010s, Payless filed for bankruptcy twice, eventually shutting down all operations in North America. Payless closed all of its remaining North American stores, more than 2,000 of them, in 2019 after filing for Chapter 11 for a second time. The company emerged from bankruptcy in January 2020. They do continue to operate stores in other parts of the world and online. Number 13, Ames. Department stores have always been common in big cities, but when Ames opened up in 1958, they went after the retail market in much smaller populated areas. It's coming to every Ames discount department store to make sure these advertised sale prices are as low as you'll find anywhere. This led to a boom in business and expansion, which reached up to 327 stores. It did not, however, come without a cost. Poor decisions around consumer credit resulted in a bankruptcy filing in 1990. The company survived and by 1993 was turning a profit again. Oh, I, I saved $11. $20.99, wow. $10.50. Wow. I saved $41. But the success didn't last. By the turn of the century, Ames had begun closing many of its stores and filed a second bankruptcy in late 2001, which saw the end of this store. Or did it? Rumors of a reopening in 2023 have surfaced. Time will tell. This comes 20 years after the discount chain uh, went out of business, so that'll be something else to see. Number 12, Tivana. No matter how large a corporation gets, you have to remember that they all started out small. 
Such was the case for Andrew T. Mack and his wife, who formed Tivana in 1997 with a little tea house in a mall. The brand became so successful that it only took 15 years for Starbucks to take notice and acquire them to the tune of $620 million. This is the first tea bar that Starbucks, a coffee company, is opening. What should we read from this move for Starbucks? Well, people don't realize we've been in the tea business for the last 40 years. The name persisted for five more years before Starbucks pulled the plug on all 379 Tivana shops. Starbucks is shutting down hundreds of its Tivana branded stores. That includes all four Colorado locations. Their entry into the tea market has since dropped considerably, as Starbucks now only sells a very limited number of Tivana products. Introducing Tivana Passion Tango Pineapple Sparkling Tea Juice, made only at Starbucks. Number 11. Sharper Image. Similar to Sky Mall and Hammaker Schlemmer, Sharper Image was a catalog business that thrived on high-tech gadgets and niche products. Every month, three million people receive this catalog in the mail, and thousands more shop in 48 retail stores around the country. Today, it's unusual to meet someone who hasn't heard of us. Distinguishing itself from the other catalog companies, they expanded into retail, opening 187 stores throughout malls and airports across the United States. I have to get this. I Harry, have to get this. We're here for Jess and Marie. I know. We'll find them something. There's great stuff here. Oddly enough, it was an air purifier product that ultimately helped kill the company. After Consumer Reports gave fail ratings to their Ionic Breeze products, Sharper Image sued. The Ionic Breeze Silent Air Purifier with Ozone Guard that can actually convert smog and ozone into oxygen. Cleaning and circulating your air with no fans, no filters, silently. However, they were themselves sued by customers for misrepresentation of their product. As the blame went back and forth, upper management changed and consumer interest tapered off. The company went bankrupt in 2008. Number 10, Circuit City. Welcome to Circuit City, where service is state of the art. Founded in 1949 under the name Ward's Company, Circuit City was one of the most popular consumer electronics stores in the United States. During their peak, the chain boasted more than 550 stores across the country, offering plenty of electronic goods and services. They even had a chance to buy out the fledgling Best Buy operation in 1988 but declined when Circuit City's CEO thought they could just put them out of business. Well, that didn't work out in the long run. When 2007 rolled around, wages were being cut, locations were being closed, and management turnover was high. Electronic retailer Circuit City has announced it's unplugging more than 150 stores. In Maryland alone, three locations are going out of business. By 2009, the company pulled the plug, and the days of Circuit City were over. Number nine. A&P. The Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company existed from 1859 to 2015. Known to most customers simply as A&P, there was a time when they were a huge player in the grocery business. We built a brand new feeling at a &P. From a few retail shops selling tea and coffee in New York, the company blossomed after being acquired by George Huntington Hartford. From there, over much time, it became a full-on grocery store, which would eventually have roughly 16,000 locations. AMP pledges guaranteed value. We guarantee the quality of all our meat and belly products. Produce too are double your money back. We also guarantee the lowest advertised prices. However, by the 1970s, the stores had become conceptually stale and plagued by bad customer service. The chain did manage to have a bit of a comeback in the early aughts, but was short-lived, and it finally went under in 2015. Many customers have shopped here for years, and they feel emotional. Everybody angry. Everybody's angry. Yeah, very bad. Was they got no store over here, no place. Number eight, F. W. Woolworth Company. It's May Value Days at Woolworth with savings for everyone. Did you know that Woolworths may have been the original inspiration for the dollar store? Founded by Frank Winfield Woolworth in 1879, it opened as Woolworth's Great Five Cent Store, which sold everything for a nickel or two. Although that operation didn't last, the subsequent store became successful. I'm the new chairman of Woolworth, and I believe in 1981 we're going to offer you better value than we've ever done before. 
Frank brought in his brother, Charles Sumner Woolworth, and the two began a journey that would see their ideas about retail continue to be used today. Woolworth's was highly successful until the 1980s, when stiff competition forced them to shift their priorities to their sporting goods division. Competition is the name of the game at Foot Locker, with the biggest selection of big names ever assembled. So whether your game is serious or social, we'll find the right shoe for you. In 2001, they became known as Foot Locker and are still selling sporting goods today. A few dozen Woolworth stores do still continue to exist in Mexico under different ownership. Number seven, Sam Goody. Goody, Goody, Sam Goody got it. Goody, Goody, Sam Goody got it. Sam Goody got it. Much like many other music retailers, Sam Goody became the victim of the digital revolution in music. Founded in 1951 as a small music shop in New York City, it eventually merged with Musicland, which helped expand the brand. At its peak, the Sam Goody branded stores expanded to 800 locations and brought in several billion dollars worth of revenue. It had become almost synonymous with music retail, which held it above water for a long time. But after struggling through a handful of acquisitions and changes to its business model, the stores began to close. By 2012, most of the stores were gone or simply rebranded as FYE. Number six, Borders. Hi. I'm Jason Schwartzman. I'm Wes Anderson. We are at the flagship Borders in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ever since Gutenberg revolutionized printing so long ago, books have been in demand. This human desire to learn or enjoy stories is what eventually spawned the likes of giant bookstore chains like Borders. Operating for nearly 40 years, this bookstore saw its peak with over 500 US-based stores, and even more via other brands and franchising. By the time 2007 rolled along, however, the company had begun to struggle to remain in business. Well, I hope this store can stay, um, because I frequent this store and uh, I want to support it. Several attempts were made to keep it going, but by September of 2011, the chain had come to an end, with its stores closing and rival chain Barnes & Noble buying its trademark. Getting the news today, it's upsetting. We tried. <laughs> We tried, we gave it our best. Number five, Fry's Electronics. Remember, your best buys are always at Fry's. Guarantee. The sale of Fry's Supermarkets chain eventually spawned a completely new type of electronics store back in 1985. The intent was to make shopping for electronics a similar experience to going for groceries. Whether it was circuit boards, software, or any other kind of electronic device, Fry's was the place to get it. Uh, Fry's was famous for its unusual exteriors and motifs like the Mayan-themed store here in San Jose. It was actually one of the few places you could buy raw computer parts off the shelf to assemble your PC on your own. The stores ballooned in popularity, and even the aforementioned Circuit City didn't offer the same kinds of fare. It's a shame to see it go away. I mean, we basically, I grew up with, you know, going to the store a lot to, you know, buy everything from my TVs to video games, and, you know, unfortunately, they're going to have to find somewhere else to buy all that stuff now. But after decades of sometimes controversial business practices and squeezed by the COVID pandemic in 2020 and long-standing market pressures, all their stores ceased operations in February 2021. All 31 Fry stores across nine states closed effective immediately. Are you a customer? Not any longer, it would seem. <laughs> Number four, linens and things. If there is one common thread connecting many of these now defunct businesses, it's that for many of them, a combination of acquisitions and management changes seems to be their undoing. Formed in 1975, this home textile and housewares big box retailer grew considerably by the time it opened its 55th store in 1983. Linens and Things, keeping America's homes beautiful through quality selection and 20 to 40% off regular prices every day. It was acquired and then eventually spun off as its own entity again in 1996, but then reacquired by Apollo Global Management in 2006. The company then truly began to find itself in financial difficulty. But the nail in the coffin came with the credit crisis. Possible buyers couldn't get credit to purchase the company, and now 371 stores are set to close by the end of the year. A series of losses combined with a decline of sales eventually forced the company to pull the plug on their stores by 2008, going online exclusively. Number three, Radio Shack. So much more than just a The 
The humble beginnings of Radio Shack began back in 1921. The company focused its sales strategy on radio and electronics hobbyists. For decades, this gave them a lucrative market to fill, and interest in electronics eventually grew even further with the new computer and video game age. It was also Radio Shack that produced the famous TRS-80, one of the first widely available home computers. Let your children discover tomorrow's technology today. The TRS-80, the biggest name in little computers. Only at Radio Shack. But much like many other retailers, their popularity declined with the rise of online shopping and fewer hobbyists to buy their wares. Though perhaps more damaging has been the retailer's failure to attract younger shoppers. By 2017, the company had gone bankrupt and was no longer the giant retailer it once was. With a smattering of stores remaining under different ownership and eventually the brand being scooped up to attempt viability online. What? The 80s called. They want their store back. Number two, Toys R Us. Who doesn't remember wanting to be a Toys R Us kid? From toys to video games to books to bikes, this was a chain that had almost everything a child could possibly want. From bikes to trains to video games, it's the biggest toy store there is. She wins! But like many retailers over the last few decades, they struggled to keep up with the times and competition with the likes of mass market stores and online shopping. It was unprepared for what no one saw coming the dot-com era and the rise of the big box store. In 2017, the chain filed for bankruptcy and began liquidating their assets. By the middle of 2018, they had closed most of their U.S. stores, with the last two closing in 2021. Yeah, I feel like kids are gonna miss out on the best store ever. I still love the store. However, you can still find Toys R Us stores across Canada and Asia. Number one, Blockbuster. One of the biggest industries to emerge from the creation of the VCR was the home movie rental business. Fast checkout, 24-hour quick drop return, open late every night. Well, the perfect video store... Welcome to Blockbuster Video! ...is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. At the inception of the movie business decades earlier, no one had ever expected people to want to watch their movies at home instead of at theaters. With more than 30,000 stores open globally at its commercial peak, if you wanted to rent a new release, odds are you went to Blockbuster Video. Oh, plus they have all kinds of video games for the kids. Video rentals became ingrained in our culture, and Blockbuster profited mightily. But as streaming services and mail-in DVD options became available over the years, the days of Be Kind Rewind were over, and Blockbuster famously ceased to be. Its various partnerships folded, and stores worldwide were rapidly plunged into administration. We're closing early. Its 9,000-strong chain had been reduced to one single franchise in Bend, Oregon. It's so strange to think that so many things that shaped our daily lives are no more, including these upcoming top brands. You remember any of these? Pontiac, a name that evokes the power and glory days of General Motors, is being dumped. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 brands that don't exist anymore. So summing up, the 80 gig Zune is an editor's choice. We like it a little bit better than the iPod Classic. It's a lot of fun to use. I hope you check it out. For this list, I'll be looking at the most notable products you won't be seeing on shelves. Sorry, Blockbuster fans. We'll only be looking at specific brands, not stores overall. Did we miss any noteworthy favorites? Number 20, Worlds of Wonder. Hi, I'm Teddy Ruxpin. Welcome to Worlds of Wonder and to the dawn of a brand new era in the evolution of toy. After conquering the toy market with products like Laser Tag and the Teddy Ruxpin Bear, Worlds of Wonder earned exclusive retail sales and distribution for the uber-popular NES system. It's a look that generates excitement and stimulates sales for the entire Nintendo product line. The money was flowing, until suddenly it wasn't. The unprecedented surge in video game sales quickly dwarfed the profits of traditional toys. Then Nintendo decided not to renew their distribution deal, leaving Worlds of Wonder without a leg, or in this case, a product, to stand on. The stock crash of 1987 was the final nail in the coffin, and the company shut its doors for good. Both the Teddy Ruxpin and Laser Tag sets have continued on in various forms, just 
not with Worlds of Wonder. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Number 19, Bear 2. Evidently, the lifestyles of the rich and famous did not include Ver 2. From their inception, the luxury phones were manufactured with an emphasis on style over function. And to be fair, they definitely succeeded in becoming a status symbol, but only because they were so ridiculously expensive. Only the richest of the rich could afford one. Working with Google, we can now offer contemporary performance products, which has attracted a younger audience to the brand. Since Ver2 phones also lacked features like GPS and Bluetooth, many felt the hefty price tag wasn't worth it. Following years of messy finances, the company officially went under in 2017. Now that they're off the market, Ver2 phones have ironically become the commodity the company always wanted them to be. Working with Android has allowed us to build contemporary, powerful products for people looking for that everyday smartphone, but just that little bit extra bit of refinement or exclusivity. Number 18, Alta Motors. I think the doors are going to fly open for areas this bike can go, perform, compete, and that's going to open up, I think, a whole new avenue of rider. The saddest part of this closure is that it had nothing to do with the product itself. Despite an overwhelmingly positive response, Alta Motors' electric bikes just weren't selling enough to keep the lights on. Their biggest issue may have been the continuing controversy between electric and gas-powered engines. In fact, Alta Motors' bikes were banned from several official races for that very reason. I first started hearing about them a year and a half ago and just kind of seeing tidbits here and there of the bike and honestly thought it was the most legit looking electric dirt bike that I'd seen up to the point. As a result, price cuts and new models were only band-aid fixes for their unsustainable cash flow. When two partnership deals fell through, the company was left severely strapped for funds and eventually ceased operations altogether in 2018 after just eight years of business. And I think that there's definitely a future for them, whether it um you know, overtakes all the gas-powered bikes, that's that's yet to be seen. Number 17, Mercury Automobile. There's not a sharp corner in sight, and the drag coefficient of 0.32 makes this the slipperiest American sedan yet. 70 years is a pretty good run for any car division, especially one that never found a consistent buyer base. See, initially, the Mercury division of Ford was created as a mid-priced alternative to their other models. However, over the years, it underwent more rebrands and redesigns than you can count on one hand. It's been a race car, a sports vehicle, an economy ride, and more. They tried targeting it to men, and then to young drivers, and then to women. This is a great find. They're a great find. Award-winning safety ratings. A brand new hybrid. While these shifts occurred gradually across decades, the shufflings eventually began to limit the car's appeal instead of widen it. By 2010, the continuously declining sales forced Ford to put the Mercury brand in park permanently. Imagine that. Imagine yourself in a Mercury. Number 16, Pebble. The idea was brought to life by people like you just a few months ago, and we're proud to say that Pebble is now ready for prime time. These days, a smartwatch that connects to your phone isn't that crazy of an idea. But back in 2014, Pebble burst onto the scene as one of the first to put it into practice. The results were instantaneous. At the time, the smartwatch was the most funded project in Kickstarter history. Your incredible support helped Pebble smash Kickstarter records not once, but twice, and ushered in a revolution in wearable technology. Unfortunately, after that amazing start, Pebble dropped like a stone. Amid shaky marketing and an unclear vision, the company consistently failed to hit sales goals. That, when paired with growing competition from the Apple Watch, spelled doom for the luxury armware. The company shut down in 2016 and, interestingly enough, was acquired by Fitbit, who did not take on any of Pebble's debt. It's focused. It's not a miniature smartphone on your wrist. It's designed from the ground up to be a truly smart watch. Number 15, Solyndra. Panels can be cost-effectively installed on typical big-box retail, warehouse, and other light industrial roofs not designed to support significant rooftop loads. On paper, Solyndra's high-class solar panels were cheaper, sturdier, and more efficient than anything else on the market. The pitch proved so enticing, they even garnered government support via a massive loan from the U.S. Department of Energy. 
However, Solyndra's lead didn't last long. There were going to be uh, some companies that did not work out. Solyndra was one of them. But the process by which the decision was made was on the merits. Within a few years of its creation, the price of natural gas nosedived, removing any financial incentive to invest in renewable energy. As a result, Solyndra's abrupt bankruptcy was about as ugly as it could get, including a full-blown government investigation into their purported excessive spending and misrepresentation of finances. While they've never been officially charged with any wrongdoing, Something tells us Solyndra won't be making more solar panels anytime soon. And everybody figured, okay, this company uh, can't fail. Number 14, McCall's. If you read magazines in the 1900s, odds are you read McCall's. While its first issue technically dates back to 1873, it wasn't until the 20th century that it became mandatory reading. As the so-called first magazine for women, McCall's featured sewing patterns, short stories, home improvement tips, and more. You don't just have to take our word for it, though. These numbers speak for themselves. At its peak, McCall's had an unprecedented readership north of 8 million. With that kind of support, it's really no wonder it survived more than a century in print. Unfortunately, stiff competition over the years slowly whittled down its audience. In 2002, it shipped its final issue. Number 13, Zune. This is actually showing a photograph right here. I can flip through the photos here. Three inch screen, pretty bright, pretty sharp. In 2006, Microsoft went up against Apple's behemoth, the iPod, and lost. Badly. In their defense, the Zune portable media players had plenty of potential. They had functionality with the popular Xbox 360, innovative social features, and even a partnership with United Airlines. But despite all of that corporate support, Zune failed to make a splash in the market. Experience the ease of Quick Play, which puts your favorite media at your fingertips. In the six years it stayed on shelves, it consistently sold less than its competitors, let alone the juggernaut that was the iPod. While several reviews praised its HD features, that wasn't enough to move the bottom line, and Microsoft discontinued production in 2012. Finding music on your player is pretty easy. There are several different ways to do it. If you want to search by letter, you can do that here. We're looking for most death. Number 12, Theranos. People don't even know that they have a basic human right to be able to get access to information about themselves and their own body. Around the turn of the century, Elizabeth Holmes founded a revolutionary breakthrough for the healthcare industry. Theranos, as it was called, created a technology that could perform rapid blood tests requiring very little of a sample at a fraction of the cost. Mesmerized by the innovation, Holmes' net worth skyrocketed to $4.5 billion. The only issue? It was all a lie. Our dream for Theranos is that every single day, someone's life is better because they can afford access to health information they couldn't afford before. Theranos' supposed science was flimsy at best and a complete fabrication at worst. The company and its incredible funding both went down in flames. But that was the least of Holmes' issues. She still faced multiple counts of fraud and was later sentenced to 11 years in prison. Given all that, don't expect Theranos to resurface ever again. We were, we were trying to, to, to take this forward, and at that time, we thought that we were doing the right thing. Number 11, Vine. You only have six seconds to get the setup for the joke and the punchline. I think people who are watching it, sometimes they don't have the time to sit down and watch a five minute YouTube video. In just six seconds, this video looping app took the world by storm. Its short form content was the very definition of addictive. And because of that, Vine's viral videos quickly became a staple of pop culture. However, it wasn't long before rivaling social media platforms got in on the trend. When the likes of Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat added their own video sharing features, Vine lost its reason to be, and most of its user base too. Right, so they're kind of shifting what Vine currently is into a new Vine camera situation. By 2017, the app shut down altogether. At the very least, a comprehensive archive of its many videos still exists, ensuring we'll never forget that it is Wednesday, my dudes. It is Wednesday, my dudes. <laughs> Number 10, Tab. When someone says they want a tab, it usually means they're going to order more at an establishment and want to keep a tally so they can pay later. Give me, give me a tab. 
tab. I can't give you a tab unless you order something. All right, give me a Pepsi free. You want a Pepsi, pal? You're gonna pay for it. Look, just give me something without any sugar in it, okay? Not for Coca-Cola. In 1963, they introduced their very first diet beverage known as Tab. Considered very popular in the 60s and 70s, they spawned various flavors of the drink, including root beer and ginger ale. Tab's outrageously satisfying. Yet when Diet Coke hit the market in 1982, Tab started to take a hit. The company began producing less and less of it as interests shifted, and Coke eventually announced in 2020 they were discontinuing the brand. There are, however, pockets of places here and there that still carry the cult favorite as of this writing, but those are rare and the soft drink is pretty much retired. Petition to save Tab was signed by several thousand people, but to no avail. Coke is putting Tab on ice. Number 9. Bugle Boy. Excuse me. Are those Bugle Boy jeans that you're wearing? Oh, yes. They are Bugle Boy jeans. Thank you. Fun fact. Bugle Boy founder William C.W. Mao actually started his entrepreneurial career in electrical engineering. When outed from his company due to an SEC inquiry, Mao shifted gears and started making clothing. But you gotta start somewhere. I mean, take your clothes, for example. If you just get out of that monkey suit, you might get a positive attitude going. I mean, the world could be your oyster. Best known for their jeans and earworm-inducing commercials, Bugle Boy was also responsible for one of the surprising trends of the 1980s, parachute pants. Parachute pants? Yeah. Um... Does, it, does everybody parachute them? Between the denim trousers and the ballooning slacks, the company sold nearly a billion dollars worth of product. Despite its success, the company had difficulty staying up with the ever-changing trends of youth culture. They eventually went bankrupt in 2001. Excuse me, are those Bugle Boy jeans? Number 8. Compaq Founded in the early 80s, this thriving computer company sold IBM PC-compatible devices, with PC standing for personal computer under their own name. So, if you're looking for a powerful portable computer that doesn't smell, we suggest you buy the Compaq Portable 2. Of course, choice. Sorry, I was miles away. Of course, the choice is yours. A few notable devices included one of the first portable computers and the Compact Presario, which featured a long line of desktop and laptop computers. In fact, the Compact Presario can even answer your computing questions. Oh, and if you happen to have a phone, it can answer that too. By 1994, they had lapped IBM and Apple in the home computer market. The most powerful PC in the world, the most powerful portable in the world, and the most powerful mid-range PCs in the world all have one thing in common. They come from the company whose annual sales reached a billion dollars, faster than any other in history. However, with the market shifting and some bad management decisions, Compaq Star began to fall. In 2002, they were acquired by Hewlett Packard, and the last Compaq branded devices were discontinued in 2013. Number 7. Pontiac. Pontiac. We build. In the 1920s, GM discovered a major price gap between their Chevrolet and Oakland-branded vehicles, prompting the birth of the 1926 Pontiac. By 1929, the Pontiacs were outselling the Oaklands enough that they discontinued the latter in 1931. Since then, Pontiac grew to become a major success for GM. Notable entries include the 69 Pontiac GTO, the Grand Am, the Fiero, and the Firebird Trans Am. Firebird, you're ready to fly. However, the turn of the century was not good for GM as they faced bankruptcy. In a bid to rescue GM, the U.S. government will be investing $30 billion in the company on top of the $20 billion already lent to it. Having already taken Oldsmobile out of the picture in 2004, Pontiac largely saw its end in 2009 when the company pulled the plug on the long-standing brand in an effort to keep themselves afloat. We just didn't have a strategy that we were satisfied with that could allow us to win with the Pontiac brand. Number six, kudos. Simply nutritious, outrageously delicious. Kudos, I'm yours, I'm yours. Candy bars come and go, but some have stood the test of time. Mars, Kit Kat, and Twix are just a few who've hung on over the years. Kudos, on the other hand, did not. 
It was a granola bar snack introduced by Mars in 1986 with a simply kudos offshoot that was meant to address the high calorie count in the original. You love the whole grain crunch and nuts in every bite. Oddly enough, in 2017, a post on the company's Facebook page confirmed the brand had been discontinued. No official reason has ever been given and the fans of the granola snack were left scratching their heads. All may not be lost as Mars apparently re-registered the brand trademark in 2020. Maybe we'll see it again someday. Number 5. Orbitz We have no idea what this company was thinking when they released their beverage back in 1997, but to no one's surprise, it didn't last. Made as a clear, non-carbonated fruit drink, Orbitz became infamous for the reaction it spawned from onlookers. If it had been released today, we're sure the likes of YouTube and TikTok would be filled with reaction videos of people trying to figure out exactly what the orbs floating in the drink were. Not only did it look like a lava lamp to go, the drink itself tasted poorly, and the orbs were apparently even worse. <coughs> this is a drink we thankfully kicked into orbit. Number 4. Netscape Navigator She was 18 years old. She doesn't even know what Netscape is. Unless you use the internet in the 90s or recognize the icon from a quick scene in Captain Marvel, you've probably never heard of this browser. At a time when the World Wide Web was just starting out, web browsers were few and far between. Netscape reigned king for a while until Microsoft came onto the scene and the browser wars began. You can get unlimited internet access for only $9.95 a month. Well, what about all those other low-cost guys, like... Don't you want an ISP that's fast, safer, reliable, and more secure? Netscape won the first few rounds, but by the time Internet Explorer 3.0 and 4.0 came out, Netscape was already lagging behind. And it didn't help that Microsoft included Explorer with every version of Windows. Everything has to change faster, obviously. You know, look at Netscape. It was born and died. I don't want to use the word died, they wouldn't like that word, but it basically was born and overtaken within uh, four years. That's pretty fast. Netscape came to an end in 2007, but left JavaScript as a legacy since it's used by virtually every web page out there. Number three, Enron. There's one thing that I hope we can achieve. It is to uh, create an environment where, where our employees can come in here and realize their potential. It's a wild ride. Enron is a name that went down in history as one of the biggest financial scandals to rock the United States. Known mainly as an energy company, Enron grew by leaps and bounds as it began to diversify its portfolio beyond just the basics of energy. Sure, that all sounds great as many companies broaden out. That's our vision. Uh, we're trying to change the world. The problem for Enron was that as large as they were, much of their financial success was due to creative accounting. In basic terms, they said they were doing fine, all the while hiding massive debts and liabilities from everyone. I understand how upper management would allow. It's because Enron actually used the same estimates in their earning reports, which magically transformed themselves into revenue, which translates directly into higher stock prices for investors. And higher bonuses and stock option payouts for execs. Everybody wins. They filed for bankruptcy in 2001, and a full investigation into their practices was launched. Like most things that end terribly, it didn't start out that way. It started with a lot of people who thought they were changing the world. And over time, they became victims of their own hubris, victims of their own greed. And so it's like taking so much promise and possibility and looking at it in a mirror and seeing the flip side reflected back at you. Number two, Kodak. Life is filled with moments just waiting to be taken. Trademarked in 1888, Kodak is a name synonymous with photography. For years, the term Kodak moment referred to a perfect instant to capture in a photo. Aren't all your moments worth Kodak film? Kodak cameras hit the market shortly after the company was formed and became the de facto standard for all things photography for decades. In 1975, they produced the world's first digital camera, but scrapped it for fear of losing their film camera business. It's sort of the classic innovator's dilemma problem. If you have this great cash cow, which is your film camera business, and you're one of the dominant players there, you're reluctant uh, to totally disrupt it yourself. Company executives held the line on film photography, but did eventually give in and join the digital revolution, which helped the company for a short time. A combination of both market growth, the explosion of the smartphone, and other competitors eventually pushed Kodak out of photography, and it now only operates as a print company after filing for bankruptcy in the early 2010s. 
for years, the company's advertisements urged people to seize the Kodak moment to capture memories. Now it looks like Kodak has let its moment pass it by. Number one, Pan Am. Say hello to a brand new world. Say hello to Pan Am. Air travel in the mid-20th century was a whole other world. Pan American World Airways, or Pan Am, practically held a monopoly on international travel at the time. They were also responsible for shifting the types of aircraft being flown to much larger planes, such as the Boeing 747. They had an advanced collection, top-notch service, and were not owned by any government entity. It was second to none. I didn't think you'd even see it in some of the finest restaurants. That state-of-the-art fleet of planes ultimately hurt them, however, when the 1973 oil crisis struck. No one was flying, and the company was taking a hit. Their accumulating debt and failure to adapt to an ever-changing industry saw them sell off their assets to various other airlines as they went under in 1991. It broke people's hearts, really. Um, not just the people that worked for the airline, but for many other people that flew it and knew it. And it was, it was the flagship airline of America. You ever have a craving for something only to head to your local store and find out that they don't have what you're looking for? Well, chances are that snack is actually a relic of the past. Heck, it might actually be one of these. Everything pops with Pringles Cracker Sticks. Welcome to Watch Mojo, And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 snacks that don't exist anymore. Chocolate lovers, watch out for new Choco Bliss. Oh, what a sweet sensation. For this list, we're looking at some of the tastiest and most missed snacks that are sadly no longer available. What's your favorite discontinued snack item? Number 20, Butterfinger BBs. For years, Bart Simpson warned us that nobody better lay a finger on his Butterfinger. You won't mind if I take a bite of his crispity, crunchity peanut. I told you, Homer. <sighs> Nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. But when it comes to Butterfinger BBs, no one's been able to lay a finger on them since 2006, not even the Bartman himself. The candy, which is basically a little ball version of the chocolate bar, had a good run beginning in the early 90s. New Butterfinger Baby! <laughs> Unbelievable snackable balls of crispity, crunchy, peanut buttery Butterfinger! But for some reason, we're not sure why, in 2006 they were done. Three years later, they introduced Butterfinger Bites in an attempt to win back fans. And while some surely appreciated the new bite size option, for others, they'll just never be as good as the BBs. Math is easy. Let's say you have 15 Butterfinger BBs, hmm? And I take five of them. What do you have left? One less, sister. Number 19, Pizza Spins. Pizza is one of the most popular foods in the world. And along with real pizza, folks have always had an affinity for pizza-flavored snack items as well. And that isn't just a modern day thing either. This was also the case back in the 1960s and 70s when General Mills introduced their little wagon wheel shaped bites of pizza deliciousness called pizza spins. Pizza. They took this pizza taste and turned it into a crunchy, munchy, mouth-sized snack. According to the General Mills website, they use tomatoes, Parmesan cheese, peppers, and pizza spices, quote, to give pizza spins an authentic Italian pizza taste. And it must have worked because although discontinued in 1975, people are still talking about them today. Can humans resist pizza spin? spin, 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 spin. Number 18, doodads. Who doesn't love a mixed snack bag? Well, from the 60s through the 90s, and maybe even into the 2000s, one such yummy combination involved toasted peanuts, pretzels, rice squares, wheat squares, and cheese tidbit crackers. It's called a party mix. Well, and, we call it doodads. We always call them doodads around Christmas. We always make these and we give them as gifts. Kind of sounds like Chex Mix, doesn't it? But it most definitely is not. It's doodads from Nabisco, and for decades, it was a very popular snack mix. Then come the 90s, and it wasn't as popular anymore. And doodads became boo dads. Because people who love them were sad to see them go. Awful dad joke aside, if you want to see what all the fuss was about, you could try making your own doodads mix at home. Number 17, Pizzeria's Pizza Chips. While most of us probably associate the Keebler Elves with cookies, back in 1991, those cute little guys took some fresh pizza dough and cooked up the Pizzeria's Pizza Chips. Come on down and taste something new. They're right, Uncle Ernie. In your dreams. Pizza! Bizotic man, chips! New Pizzeria's! The chips made their debut with three flavors. 
cheese pizza, pizza supreme, and zesty pepperoni, and they were an instant hit. However, by the end of the decade, the Keebler company had been sold, and the pizzerias were discontinued. Allow me, boys. <laughs> pizzerias! Tastes like real pizza! That hasn't stopped fans of the chips from trying to bring them back, though. As of the end of 2021, a couple of Bring Back Pizzeria's Chips Facebook groups were sporting over 7,000 followers. Number 16, Hershey's Kissables. Now, don't worry, Hershey's Kisses still exist and aren't going anywhere. No, here we're talking about Kissables, which, if you don't remember, were basically Hershey's Kisses with a candy coating. If you're thinking it sounds like a bigger, kiss-shaped M&M and sounds delicious, it was, and it was. Peaceable, blissable, laughable, visible, inable, loudable, eatable, treatable, colorful, candy shell, colorful, candy shell, colorful, candy shell, chocolate inside. So why did they go away in 2009, just four years after they launched? That's because in 2007, the Hershey company made some cost-cutting moves that included replacing the cocoa butter with cheaper fats in some of their candies, including Kissables. People noticed, and they did not like it. Sales dropped, and that was the end of Kissables. Number 15, Hostess Choco Bliss. Take two layers of chocolate cake, sandwich a layer of chocolate cream in between, top it off with chocolate icing, and there you have the aptly named Choco Bliss. Whoa, check that super chocolatey icing. Awesome! Ooh! Hey, whipped chocolatey cream inside. Billed as a chocolate lover's dream, these Hostess snack cakes were a lunchbox favorite of many 80s kids. They sound like they'd be a favorite of ours today as well had they not been discontinued decades ago. Choco Bliss, a dream come true. One, two, three, I'm in ecstasy. New Choco Bliss from Hostess, watch out. We don't know why Hostess gave up on them, but we do know there are online forums filled with commenters lamenting the fact that they can no longer get their hands on this bliss from their childhood. Number 14, Oreo Sippers. As we make the move to try and save our planet, more and more countries are putting in place bans on plastics, most notably plastic bags and plastic straws. Two of the largest recycling facilities in the U.S. said its machines don't always catch straws. So they end up in the trash and eventually in landfills. And while we wholeheartedly support such bans, we also don't always love the paper straws that some restaurants now use. But you know what's better than paper? Oreos. But you can't make a straw out of an Oreo. Yes, you can, and they did. They were called Oreo Sippers, and they were awesome. Because not only were they a straw, but they were also delicious. Um, is there anything more eco-friendly than actually eating your utensil? Come on, Oreo, bring them back for the sake of our planet. Number 13, Altoid Sours. Altoids and those awesome reusable tin containers are a staple in many of our purses and bags and car consoles. But as good as the regular Curiously Strong mints are, we miss the Curiously Sour ones. Was it a pleasant experience popping them in your mouth? Maybe not. But that was the point. It said sour on the tin, and unlike other so-called sour candies, Altoid Sours lived up to the billing. Mm. So how did you like that? I like that one. I like it a lot. People love Altoid Sours. Will you? But unfortunately, not enough people wanted that sour face puckering experience. And according to a representative from the Mars Corporation, quote, they were discontinued due to low national demand. However, if you are truly desperate, you may still be able to find unopened tins on eBay for the wallet puckering price of up to $525. Remember, use caution when experimenting with Altoid Citrus Sours. Number 12, Pringles Sticks. We all know that with Pringles chips, once you pop, you can't stop. But back in the 2000s and early 2010s, Pringles also gave us sticks. New Pringles Sticks. The crispy cracker sticks with a one-of-a-kind taste. And once we had sticks, we couldn't quit. Okay, so maybe we need to work on our tagline game, but that does not take away from how good these sticks were, especially the honey butter and cheese-flavored ones. Crunchy. Whoa, this one's real good. I can taste the honey. However, while the sticks had a loyal fan base, as Pringles posted on their Twitter account back in 2020, quote, Pringle sticks were discontinued in this sector of the universe due to lower demand. Number 11, Jell-O 123. If you aren't already jealous of kids who grew up in the 80s and 90s, here's one more reason to be, or should we say one, two, and three more reasons. Jell-O 123 was a magical dessert that, like classic Jell-O, came in one packet. 
However, unlike the OG Jell-O, the 123 version would split into three layers during the three-hour wait time. What could compete with a dessert that actually forms three layers right before your eyes? A creamy layer, a fluffy layer, a layer of fruity gelatin. While we can't speak to the taste, one of the problems with the product was that making it wasn't as easy as 123. Getting the three layers just right required a blender and the introduction of both boiling and cold water at precise speeds and times. Jell-O 123 was discontinued in 1996. Something that your kids would absolutely love, easy to make, and you can also substitute your favorite sugar-free Jell-O gelatin product that you'd like. Number 10, PB Crisps. It began with a nut and a bolt that shook his top hat with a jolt. PB Crisp, an idea for a munch. You just know a snack is missed when there are groups on multiple platforms asking for their return. PB Crisps were one such snack. A small gram that looked like a little peanut, but filled with huge flavor. With gram cookie outside for crunch. Inside a center so sweet. Peanut butter cream. Oh, a treat. That's because inside there was some delicious peanut butter filling. While PB and J Crisps added jelly. And chocolate crisps were filled with, you guessed it, chocolate. It was the combination of crispiness, sweetness, and er, nuttiness that made us crave PB crisps back in the mid-90s. And we would do just about anything to have them back. PB crisp, PB crisp, PB crisp. The sweet taste that is destined for fame. Number 9. Jell-O Pudding Pops. Jell-O brand pudding pops made with the goodness of real Jell-O. Imitation may be the sincerest form of flattery, but nothing quite beats the real thing. This is a running thread for many of these snacks, such as Jell-O Pudding Pops, because it isn't as if frozen pudding on a stick has gone away. It's more that the trademarked brand and that trademarked taste is no more. New rich, creamy tasting Jell-O brand pudding pops. All the goodness of real Jell-O pudding frozen on. Jell-O pudding pops were a summertime staple throughout the 1980s and beyond. A creamy and indulgent frozen treat. The OG Pudding Pops were lost after General Foods sold the name to Popsicle, which used their own flavoring and production methods. The good news is that you can technically make these at home if you buy the Jell-O molds, some milk, and a little bit of nostalgia. Jell-O brand Pudding Pops, all the goodness of real Jell-O pudding made with milk so you know it's wholesome. Number 8. Peanut Butter Boppers Good old creamy peanut butter's gone. Boppers! Trust us when we tell you that you have not lived unless you've had peanut butter boppers in your mouth. This crispy, creamy, and utterly delicious snack was almost sinful in its ridiculous indulgence. The snack was from the Nature Valley Company, which today is more closely associated with healthy-ish granola snacks. There was nothing remotely health-conscious about peanut butter boppers, however. Unless we're counting the protein in the peanut butter? Peanut butter boppers! <laughs> it's creamy peanut butter, a crispy coating, and a whole lot more! Regardless, this creamy PB center was smooth and velvety in texture. A mouthfeel that clashed in the best way possible with those crispy crunchies on the outside. Seriously, someone find us some peanut butter boppers. Peanut butter boppers! New from Nature Valley! What a snack! Number 7. Flintstones Push-Up Pops Push-Up Pops were around in the 80s and are still around today. But they were at their most popular and, according to many, their yummiest from 1990 to 1996 when they were branded as Flintstones Push-Up Pops. Fred, Barney, Wilma, too! Make every bite more fun for you! Push-Ups, Flintstones Push-Up! Something about that modern Stone Age family made pushing frozen treats out of a cardboard tube so much better and that much more yabba-dabba delicious. Flavors like Lime Rock Lime and Bedrock Berry were just as good as their puns. It takes a dinosaur to bring you a taste this big. Fruity Flintstone Sherbet and Creamy Cool Vanilla. And they even had a Pebbles push-ups line that added nerds candies to the frozen goodness. Number 6. PB Max It don't stand for piggy banks, platinum blonde, pink baboon. Let's face it, candy bars come and go, most without much fanfare. There are some serious calls for the return of the PB Max, however. A Mars candy creation that really was something else. The final form of PB Max wasn't just peanut butter and chocolate, but a delicious cookie topped with PB and then covered in sweet chocolate heaven. PB means peanut butter, real peanut butter, lots of real peanut butter, in pure milk chocolate with a crunch of a whole grain cookie. The most frustrating thing about the PB Max's demise is that it actually sold really well. However, the Mars family reportedly didn't like peanut butter, or money apparently, so they used this subjective opinion as a means for the PB Max axe. What a waste. 
PB Max, we mean peanut butter. Number five, Cheetos Twisted. It's geometry time. Ooh, snackometry time. It may seem as if there's a new flavor of Cheetos available every week. So, you'd be forgiven if you didn't notice that Cheetos Twisted no longer exist. New Twisted Cheetos Snacks. These curly Q-shaped Cheeto snacks were thicker, meaning more of that finger-staining cheese dust to coat your fingers. They also arrived armed with that patented Cheetos Crunch and were available from around 2002 to 2012, but all good things must eventually come to an end. The Cheetos folks discontinued their Twisted brand, but never fear because the company is bound to create something similar down the line. Number 4. Yogos Kellogg's Yogos just got hit with watermelon splash flavor! Part fruity flavor, part yogurty coating, new watermelon splash flavor Yogos! Worlds of fun! Parents will often do just about anything to get their kids to eat healthy, but even the busiest folks have their limits. Yogos weren't trying to masquerade as healthy fruit or yogurt, but instead were sugary, fruit-flavored snacks with a yogurt coating on top. They were an acquired taste, to say the least, but millennials were on that taste back when they were kids, as Yogos seemed to be on top between 2005 and the beginning of the 2010s. Logo on the Yogo. Chewy, sweet, sour, and available in varieties of berry flavors, Yogos were perhaps too unique for this world, and burned so bright that they could never be brought back. Ah, what a blast! Just like new Go Go Gorilla Mix, seriously rough stuff! Number 3. Philadelphia Cheesecake Snack Bars. Ooh, Philly Snack Bars. Hey, ever think to yourself, I've been good. Why shouldn't I have cheesecake for a snack? Mm, cheesecake. What? This is heaven. No? It was just us? Yeah, well. We have no regrets about devouring this indulgent snack from the Philadelphia people. Small, snack-sized cheesecake squares available to eat any hour of the day. You want the graham cracker bottom? You get the graham cracker bottom. You want sweet icing and fruit laced over that thick cheesecake deliciousness? Shut the front door and eat these slices of heaven in private because we guarantee you're gonna have a moment. We can only hope and pray that the next time we stroll by our grocer's freezer, this classic snack will be staring back at us. Treat yourself to the rich and creamy cheesecake taste of Philadelphia snack bars. Here you go, Fluffy. They're a little taste of heaven. Number two, Hershey's Bites. The Hershey's Company has so many delicious snacks under their belt, it's easy to forget that there's also plenty of forgotten classics. Hershey's Swoops were one, but the penultimate spot on our list goes to the much-missed Hershey's Bites. No, not the candy bites, but this even crunchier and more snackable concoction that came in a variety of flavors. Hey, look who just showed up! Introducing new Kit Kat and Heath Bites. You get the feeling everyone is staring at us. What, is my bag open? Rolos, Kit Kats, Peppermint Patties, and more were all shrunk down and packaged in a size that was perfectly geared for guzzling. Unfortunately, they posed a choking hazard for some, and most of the line was discontinued. However, Hershey's website does say that limited flavors can be purchased direct, but don't go scouring store shelves for this one. Number 1. Keebler Magic Middles Ideas that will change the cookie world forever! Melted chocolatey middles in the cookies! Too late, we just did it! New Keebler Magic Middles. If there were ever a snack cookie king, this was the one. The mighty Keebler elves truly outdid themselves when they magically concocted the recipe for the perfect treat. Caught him smuggling melted chocolatey filling out of your factory. Tree. Pretty clever. <laughs> he hid it inside this chocolate chip cookie. Oh, you mean Keebler Magic Middles. The shortbread wasn't too sweet and held its integrity against that chocolatey or peanut buttery flavor core that burst onto your taste buds with the force of a fudgy freight train. Oh, and if you warmed these bad boys in the microwave for a few seconds, absolute heaven. We're not sure if we can go all the way to the top of the Keebler elf hierarchy for some answers, but we are desperate for Magic Middles to be made available again. New Magic Middles from Keebler. Genius, pure genius. We can't unearth lost treasures or fading memories of a bygone era without highlighting the many products that have left our lives. So, here they are. Now, actually, to be totally honest with you, you don't want to buy any VCR. It's a dead technology. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 products that don't exist anymore. They're the guardians of obsolete formats. Betamax, 8-track, floppy disk, reel-to-reel.
For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable merchandise you can't find on store shelves anymore. Which of these do you miss the most? Number 20, Pagers. With the press of a button, Pagers revolutionized telecommunication back in the 1950s. They were convenient, they were practical, and best of all, they were the hip new thing. An inexpensive way to keep in touch for important calls and messages while you're away from home or office. But over the years, a ton of worthy competition entered the fray. By the turn of the 21st century, smartphones could do almost everything a pager could, but better. So, we're gonna reinvent the phone. They hung on for a few more years due to their increased reliability, but eventually, pagers just couldn't keep up with the feature-rich cell phones. By 2021, most paging service providers had shuttered for good, leaving this communicator an obsolete relic of the past. Can I ask you a question? Do you know if the hotel's pager-friendly? What do you mean? I'm not getting a sig on my beeper. Number 19, kudos. It's hard to go wrong with a good old-fashioned granola bar, but the real kicker is that Kudos bars were all a part of a sugary, well-balanced breakfast. Jesus, Jesus, kudos, I'm yours. I'm yours. While they definitely had more flavor than nutrition, that didn't stop them from becoming a staple breakfast treat in the 80s and 90s. Electrifying, granola fire. Still, over time, their name recognition started to dwindle. Then in 2017, a comment on the company's Facebook page confirmed that Kudos Bars were officially discontinued. Given the unceremonious nature of its goodbye, we aren't crossing our fingers for a relaunch anytime soon. But you gotta give it Kudos for one thing, that theme song never gets old. Kudos, I'm yours, I'm yours! Number 18, PB Crisps. Since their mascot is an actual peanut, it's safe to say Planters pretty much corners the market on all things nuts. As if to prove it, they entered the 90s by introducing a whole new way to enjoy their product. Enter PB Crisps, the so-called peanut butter with a crunch. Inside the center so sweet, peanut butter cream, oh a treat. The cream-filled cookies were a massive hit, at least for the people who tried them. The crisp disappeared after just three years on shelves with no official explanation as to why. That hasn't stopped people from talking about them though. PB Crisps and new chocolate, yes, chocolate crisps from Planters. To this day, Fans are still clamoring for a return of PB Crisps. There's even a website for it and everything. Number 17, fax machines. This kind of tech is an increasingly dying breed. At the very least, the fax machine can be proud of its near century long reign as the de facto office communicator. With Sharp's choice of fax machines, you can send documents in as little as 12 seconds to any place in the world you can phone. But there's a lot of alternatives to compete with these days, primarily email and the internet, both of which are much less cumbersome than a modern day telecopier. Looking at all of that, it's clear that the fall of the fax machine is more of a matter of when, not if. Sure, it still has its uses in certain fields, but compared to what else is on the market, fax machines feel like they're on their last print. Have these guys ever heard of a damn fax machine? Number 16, Delia's Catalog. Even by today's standards, having the latest and greatest fashion trends sent right to your door is a pretty compelling offer. In the 90s, it was practically a must-have. Delia's catalog presented itself as more of a magazine than of a store, and that novel approach gave it a chokehold on the decade's fashion sense. Because there was little to no competition in the teen market, Delia's was able to thrive. But since the novelty of catalog orders wore off, the brand was left without anything to stand on. Later, when online shopping officially took over, Delia's once famous catalog quietly went out of print. The company's product is still around today, just without the paper version or the brand recognition. With crop tops, corsets, lingerie-inspired pieces, and micro mini skirts, the Delia's today is a far cry from the tween-friendly brand it started as. Number 15, PDAs. For as cool as a personal digital assistant sounds, there's just no need for one anymore. Doris, the personal digital assistant from Sharp. Everything that made it unique in the 80s is now commonplace in basically any smart device on the market. Internet access, messaging, reminders, smartphones and computers do all of that, and so much more. The steady decline of PDA sales reflects as much. Just ask Apple. Their entire company almost went under after banking hard on the Apple Newton. Hey, Doff, take a memo on your Newton. Beat up, Martin. It also served as a cautionary tale for their competitors, most of whom have since abandoned their PDA lines. Fortunately, the tech went to good use, and several of those companies began manufacturing cell phones instead. Number 14, Netscape Navigator. This wasn't just a web browser, this was the web browser. It seemed as if nothing could stop the driving force on the web browser marketplace that was Netscape. 
Netscape Navigator's intuitive user interface helped popularize internet use, and the company was rewarded for that with incredible word of mouth. But every industry needs some healthy competition, and soon enough, Microsoft entered the ring with Internet Explorer. Accompanied by PC bundles and an unprecedented marketing blitz, the new browser utterly destroyed Netscape's rule. In fact, Microsoft's launch was so aggressive, the US Court of Law officially called it an illegal monopoly. But by then, the damage was already done. Netscape Navigator never earned back its audience and officially went off the grid in 2008. Did you know you were still using Netscape Navigator? Number 13, Orbits. On paper, this infamous drink doesn't sound too bad. It was non-carbonated, relatively healthy, and even had several different fruit flavors. Well, first off, we have vanilla orange. However, the real issue had nothing to do with the drink's taste. It was that Orbitz wasn't fully liquid. See, the entire pitch is that Orbitz are small, gelatinous orbs that dissolve in your mouth. Everybody was picking it up, checking it out. As you can imagine, people didn't like having to eat their drink. Orbitz were reviewed poorly and sold even worse. To put it into perspective, they only lasted a single measly year into production before going AWOL. These days, the only place to find an Orbitz is from a collector. I really do wish Orbitz would come back, but knowing full well the capabilities of Clearly Canadian at the moment, it's not gonna happen. Number 12, floppy disks. In 1996, there were an estimated 5 billion of these flimsy disks in use, and that's just counting the standard version. Come on, guys! I thought you knew better, don't copy that floppy! And yet, by 2007, floppy disks were already collecting dust. The culprit behind their sharp decline in sales is primarily USB drives. Oh, and memory cards. Then cloud storage. Floppy disks simply weren't made to keep up with the rapid influx in memory technology. If anything, they took up more space than they saved. The manufacturing of the diskettes is over, and so all of the diskettes that will be made have been made. Their legacy isn't all doom and gloom, though. In order to make the transition easier on consumers, several computing companies use the floppy disk image as their save icon. So, really, it's like they're still with us. Everything was much easier when it was just floppy disks. Number 11, 3G phones. The third generation of smartphones had a lot of winners. The iPhone 5, the Galaxy S9, and the Google Pixel 2, just to name a few. But, as with any growing industry, there will always be a day where one era powers off so another can click on. It's not like 3G devices got cancelled or anything, it's just that their framework needed to be upgraded to match the newest standards. After all, why bother keeping 3G around when 4G is technologically superior, not to mention 5G? As a result of the industry's innovation, most third-generation phones will lose support by the end of 2024, and that's if they haven't already. Number 10, answering machines. It's not really fair to say that answering machines don't exist anymore. Rather, they just don't sell as well as they used to, or really at all. Gotta change my answering machine now that I'm alone. It's tragic because their cousin, the voicemail, is still a very prevalent part of cellular communication. But the silver bullet of answering machines is that they're specifically tied to a person's home landline. Since those are quickly becoming extinct, the answering machine is going down with them. Believe it or not, George isn't at home. Please leave a message at the beep. Technically, you can still call any of them up and get the same voicemail-like message, but unless there's a major change in the market, answering machines are not long for the tech world. Believe it or not, I'm not home. Number 9. Kodak Cameras this Kodak moment ended in a camera flash. Even though they were the ones to develop the first self-contained digital camera, the company's higher-ups were extremely hesitant to shift their brand away from film rolls. The most accurate, realistic color in print film is here. That proved to be a fatal error, and by the time Kodak started playing catch-up, the digital market had already left them in the dust. Following a decade of rocky finances, the company officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2012. This once great company files for bankruptcy, and now they're trying to build with whatever you can. Thankfully, there's a happy ending for Kodak. The brand emerged from their financial woes with a new focus on printing, supplying film, and later, pharmaceuticals. But the same can't be said for their camera production. Number 8. Walkman. Way back when, Sony built a product based on the idea of cassettes on the go, and the industry hasn't been the same since. Sony introduces the only cassette player as small as a cassette case. The Walkman proved to be so absurdly popular, it became ubiquitous with the very concept of portable music. You just leave it all up to me. 
including Sony's own Discman line, it's to the point that the word revolutionary doesn't feel like it does the Walkman justice. While it was inevitably overtaken by the rise of smartphones, this portable player still lives on as an iconic piece of 20th century pop culture. Sony introduces the only cassette player as small as a cassette case, the incredible sounding Super Walkman. Sure, it ended production in 2010, but with over 200 million units made, odds are the Walkman's legacy won't be forgotten anytime soon. Number 7. Tab Surprisingly enough, the Coca-Cola company's first ever diet drink wasn't actually Diet Coke. It was Tab, a sugarless soda marketed to those who wanted to quote unquote, keep tabs on their weight. <laughs> As one of the first beverages to tap into the diet market, Tab was an instant success. But it came under friendly fire when the Coca-Cola company introduced Diet Coke in 1982. Just like that, Tab lost its only claim to fame. However, its passionate audience was enough to keep it around for almost another 40 years. But despite their efforts, the drink shipped its last case in 2020. Coke hasn't kept tabs on it since. Ooh, Number 6. Phone Booths if you're looking on the side of busy roads, you're more likely to find a Wi-Fi hotspot than a phone booth. Pull you back. Quite frankly, the change has been a long time coming. Ever since smartphones became the communication standard, payphones have been left in a dire place. As you can imagine, it's even worse for phone booths. Almost every single one in the United States has been torn up or converted, and that's getting off lucky compared to some other countries. Excuse me. I'm trying to make a call here. In Belgium, Denmark, Norway, and more, you couldn't find a working phone booth even if you wanted to. At this rate, it'll only be a few years before phone booths stop ringing worldwide. What were they used for? In New York? Bathrooms. Number 5. Pontiacs. General Motors revved up a lot of cars in the 20th century. So much so, that they could afford to sell their Pontiac brands as less of a vehicle and more of a lifestyle. The 65 Pontiac GTO. It's the swingin'est car. In the late 50s specifically, this type of car was a status symbol. But as the years went on, it became a symbol that people cared less and less about. Pontiac had restructured before to great success, and they might have been able to do it again if not for the economic crash of 2008. Up against intense financial pressure, GM gave Pontiac one last lap before retiring it for good in 2010. Pontiac, fuel for the soul. Number four, BlackBerry phones. Before Android and iOS dominated the cell phone space, there was a third contender in the ring. For much of the mid to late 2000s, Research in Motion's BlackBerry was the most popular smartphone brand in the US, and it wasn't close. Well, actually, there was four, but Sony's Ericsson phones failed to put up much of a fight. BlackBerry, on the other hand, was a worthwhile rival during the 2000s. What do you call it? It's called a BlackBerry. Their name recognition was second to none, and they had the slick product to back it up at least at first. Unfortunately, they couldn't evolve fast enough to match the ever-changing landscape. Introducing the new BlackBerry Classic, with more power and control than ever before. As Android and iOS flourished into the 2010s, BlackBerry lost almost three quarters of its sales numbers. Their last product came out in 2018, and no one's heard anything from them since. Number three, VCR. They didn't call it appointment television for nothing. Nouriel, you're missing your favorite show. For decades, if you wanted to watch something on TV, you had to be in the right place, at the right time, on the right channel. Then, out of nowhere, came the VCR. Suddenly, all it took was a handy VHS tape, and you could record anything on TV for future viewing. Suppose it's over three hours. Relax. Panasonic VHS tapes up to four hours of sports, movies, specials on one cassette. It completely changed the game, and immediately everybody wanted in on the profit. In came DVDs, which were easier, cheaper, and more reliable than VHS tapes. When that sank, the need for video cassette players went with it. The very last VCR manufacturer ceased production in 2016. Have you ever heard of a VCR? No, I haven't. Number two, MP3 players. The music business is a tough place to stay relevant in. Case in point, Microsoft's epic failure in the Zune. Don't tell me this is Zune bad. But for every one of those, there was the iPod, a music player that just did everything right. Everyone wants the iPod. It's a huge hit. It is almost a Christmas miracle. And yet, even that couldn't stay afloat forever. The story is the same all around. They all failed to stay relevant. Just as soon as MP3 players reached their stride, smartphones had developed enough to do the exact same thing. The iPhone eclipsing the iPod is a good metaphor for what happened to just about every MP3 player on the market. Nobody needed them anymore. And that's that. Tunes? Got my old iPod. We can rock out. Number one, Internet Explorer. 
From Netscape Navigator's ashes, Microsoft grew a web browser with a legacy that speaks for itself. Internet Explorer was a fixture on nearly all Windows PCs from the mid-1990s to the mid-2000s. At its peak, Internet Explorer had an absolute gargantuan 95% market share. If that doesn't speak to its status, nothing will. Unfortunately for Microsoft, the browser war didn't end there. You see, Microsoft tried to set its early versions of IE apart from its competitors by focusing on adding new features rather than simply trying to make the browser as fast as possible. Firefox, Google Chrome, and Safari all entered the fray in the coming years, each taking a noticeable chunk out of Internet Explorer's user base. So with that, IE's market share dropped precipitously, and yet Microsoft still didn't seem to be seriously trying to address the problem. Eventually, the once mighty browser was forced to cut its losses and relaunch as the new and improved Microsoft Edge. Given how quickly it lost support among both users and developers, it's clear that Internet Explorer 12 isn't coming anytime soon. Remember at the beginning of the video where we looked at all those stores that went bye-bye? Well, it turns out there are plenty of other stores that disappeared. Yes, here are even more stores that don't exist anymore. Where am I? You're in Bed Bath & Beyond, sir. I was just watching you sleep. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 more stores that don't exist anymore. You know that one you've been looking for? So do we. Suncoast, it's where you buy movies. For this list, we'll be looking at major retail chains that were dealt fatal blows when caught in the unrelenting gears of market forces. Our economy has left innumerable retailers for dead over the decades. If your favorite childhood store was left off this list... Number 20, Tweeter. Tweeter. Like Tweeter, aka Tweeter Etc., aka Tweeter Home Entertainment, was a New England consumer electronics chain. Founded in Boston by Sandy and Michael Bloomberg in 1972, the chain grew and grew throughout New England. In the 1990s, Tweeter started a campaign of national expansion by buying out chains in other markets. They expanded to Chicago, Florida, and Atlanta through acquisitions of other electronic franchises. By the end of its time, Tweeter specialized in flat screen televisions. I'll look into this Tweeter thing, but no promises. In the spring of 2007, Tweeter had around 100 stores nationwide. Even before the Great Recession hit, half of those stores had closed. By the time the waves of the recession receded, Tweeter went bankrupt. Number 19, Stephen Barry's. Stephen Shore and Barry Prever were college students at the University of Pennsylvania in 1985. They recognized that university bookstores and gift stores sold goods with an absurd markup. They saw an opportunity, founding a chain targeting college students with bargain basement prices. Stephen Barry's was a retail clothing store that focused on casual clothes, accessorizing, and footwear. They expanded to college campuses and malls across America, eventually reaching 276 stores in 39 states. Stephen Barry seemed destined to conquer, earning such praise as Hot Retailer of the Year in 2005 and Marketer of the Year in 2007. Before the decade was out, the chain went belly up. Like so many others, Stephen Barry's was taken out by the Great Recession. Goodbye recession, hello depression. Number 18, Club Libby Lou. Some stores make the decision early on that they aren't selling goods, but an experience. That was the logic behind the short-lived Club Libby Lou franchise. Named after the childhood imaginary friend of founder Mary Drolet, Club Libby Lou served girls from ages 4 to 12. It provided girls and young tweens with makeovers, dress-up parties, stuffed animals, and custom cosmetics. You can be like Hannah Montana with the new on-tour makeover at Club Libby Lou. Perform with your bling and sequin tank, microphone, and more. At its peak, Club Libby Lou was a subsidiary of Saks and at almost 100 locations nationwide. By November 2008, the miserable state of the economy forced Saks to shutter Club Libby Lou's doors. Number 17, Crazy Eddie. Crazy Eddie Antar was a Brooklyn-based businessman who opened up an electronics retail chain with his brother, Sam. The store and their Crazy Eddie commercials were a New York City staple in the 1980s. This is it! It's Crazy Eddie's greatest clearance sale ever! Crazy Eddie's slashing prices on specially marked items in his enormous inventory! Stereo equipment, video equipment, color TVs, car stereo CVs, telephone equipment, disco equipment, and professional products! Plus an unbelievable selection of floor samples and demonstrators, all with full manufacturer's warranties and most priced at or below cost! It's Crazy Eddie's greatest clearance sale ever! Going on right now with prices that are insane! Crazy Eddie! Tw the chain was widely successful, with just one wrinkle from the very beginning. Eddie and Sam were crooks. 
They committed an absolutely gobsmacking amount of fraud and their books were a complete sham. Well, initially he was just stealing and garden variety tax evasion, but then he, he came up with a better idea. You see, by taking his own money, stealing it and putting it back on his books. It was raining cash. He took the company public at $8 a share. A year later, it was trading at 75. By 1983, it became difficult for Eddie to hide his criminality, so he took the company public. Eddie pumped and dumped a ton of stock, lost the business, and then went to prison. The initial investigation into the crazy Eddie fraud, the SEC thought that we deliberately understated our numbers to take over the company on the cheap. The chain closed in 1989, though in the late 90s and 2000s, the Antars attempted an online comeback. It died for good in 2012. Number 16, Lomans. Lomans is a sad example of how even the American dream doesn't necessarily last forever. That is a great dress. Thank you very much. Where did you get that dress? Lomans. Uh -huh. Guess how much? $75. No way. No lie. Yes, <laughs> way. Is it Italian? Italian made or Italian design? Ladies. Sorry. Rita Loman was a young woman when her husband's haberdashery failed. She took a job as a clothes buyer in New York. Rita started to buy overstocked items from top designers and sold them at a bargain out of her home. Eventually, they opened the first Lomans in 1921. The store was incredibly successful and went public after her death. 37 years later, by 1999, Lomans had around 100 locations in 17 states. Over the next 15 years, the chain underwent a series of bankruptcies and acquisitions. By 2014, all brick and mortar locations were closed, and by 2018, its online store shut down. The latest runway looks from real designer names you know at fall off your four inch heel prices. Lomans Italian event starts tomorrow. Shop early for the best of the best. Lomans, real designers, really discounted. Number 15, Walden Books. Walden Books? Well, that's a major chain, huh? <laughs> Gary, I'm going to Walden Books. Oh, get out! Get out! I don't want to live like this! All right, let's go. After leaving Simon & Schuster in 1933, sales manager Lawrence Hoyt opened a small rental library in Connecticut with his partner, Melvin T. Kafka. They named their business the Walden Book Company after Henry David Thoreau's famous book. Walden. I read this in seventh grade. I would have called it on Boring Pond. Their goal was to help an immiserated populace psychologically deal with the Great Depression. They had hundreds of locations by 1948. The post-World War II era killed the rental library business, so the company successfully pivoted to book sales. When America looks for the right Christmas gift, America finds it at Walden Books. Walden Books entered the great wheel of capitalism, acquiring smaller companies and getting bought and sold by larger ones. It was eventually spun off by Kmart and became a part of Borders. All Walden Books closed when Borders was killed by Amazon in 2011. Number 14, Gadzooks. In this golden age of online retail, it can be hard to remember that the shopping mall was once the center of American commerce. In the 1980s and 90s, malls were both shopping and cultural centers. Let's go to the mall. This is the 90s. Why does it look like 1986? The 80s didn't come to Canada till like 93. There were retail brands that did not exist outside of a mall. If you were a teen at a mall in Texas during that time, there's a good chance you shopped at Gadzooks. The store initially focused on t-shirts before expanding into a full-blown mini department store for teens. By 1995, Gadzooks went public, and by 2000 there were over 300 stores and malls across America. To fight off competitors, Gadzooks dropped its menwear and catered exclusively to teen women. That pivot killed the brand completely five years later. <gasps> Gadzooks. Number 13. Papyrus. Papyrus? Are you kidding me? There's no place for that in a professional office setting. Margaret Sherman opened the first papyrus store as a retail branch of her fine paper company. With barely $1,000 in a dream, Sherman created a business that would grow into an empire of over 450 stores throughout the U.S. and Canada. Papyrus sold greeting cards and luxury stationery throughout the country, expanding with a 2009 purchase of American greeting stores. Unfortunately, they misread the market and slowly but surely contracted to only 260 stores by 2020. In January, two months before the COVID lockdowns, which sent shockwaves throughout the economy, Papyrus shores were all shuttered and liquidated. Number 12, Virgin Megastore. Mega billionaire Richard Branson started his mogul career at the age of 16 with a self-published magazine, Student. 
1970, he pivoted to a mail-order record business and opened his first Virgin Records in 1972. The brand boomed quickly, and Branson opened his first megastore in London by 1979. Some days I'm afraid I'll go berserk through the country A through K rack out on the street and go work in a Virgin megastore and never come back. Virgin Megastore's expanded product selection included consumer electronics, books, and sometimes fashion. Branson ruled the British market, and Virgin Megastore's opened around the world. Perhaps predicting a shift in retail, Branson sold or licensed the brand to a number of companies in the early 2000s. Today, Virgin Megastore's only exist in the Middle East and North Africa. All other locations have closed down. Number 11. Suncoast Motion Picture Company. There are over 10,000 great movie gifts at Suncoast, like the comedy hit Beverly Hills Cop 3, Four Weddings and a Funeral starring Hugh Grant and Andy McDowell, and Jim Carrey in The Mask. These and hundreds of other titles are on sale now. Thanks to the invention of VHS tapes, and to a lesser extent Betamax, Hollywood discovered a profitable secondary market for movies. Tens of thousands of video rental stores and nationwide chains popped up all over the U.S. and became a booming business. One of those retailers was the Suncoast Motion Picture Company. What do you do, anyway? I thought you went to MIT. I work at Suncoast Video. Wow. Congratulations. Mom and Dad must be psyched. I'm gonna get out of here. Check this out, Moonwalk. A spin-off of Suncoast Records, Suncoast Motion Picture Company sold VHS tapes, collectibles, records, cassette tapes, and CDs. The retailer fell victim to chains of acquisitions and sales, eventually getting liquidated. As of May 2023, only four Suncoast Motion Picture Company franchises exist in the United States. Number 10, Filene's. William Filene was an American businessman who founded an incredibly successful department store in Boston in 1881. Filene's is so important to the city's identity, the original store was designated a city landmark. Its sister store, Filene's Basement, saw similar success. Also, nobody knows what Filene's Basement is. That's a shame. You definitely paid too much for that coat. In 1929, Filene's joined with other competitors to create the holding company, Federated Department Stores. In the back half of the 20th century, Filene's gained a foothold in New England and New York shopping malls. Filene's was sold off to May Department Stores in 1988. However, Federated acquired May in 2005 and folded Filene's into Macy's. I guess we could hit Filene's basement, see if there's anything in the bargain bin. Never! You now only shop upstairs at Filene's where they have fancy windows and you pay full price. Full price? Can that even be done? Number nine, Discovery Channel Store. Large companies love to find ways to leverage their brand power and enter new markets. In the 1990s, a number of media corporations tried to synergize their media brand with a retail store business to sell branded content. Both Disney and Warner Brothers made the attempt but failed, thanks to large market forces. If those brands, each with a massive library of intellectual property, couldn't make it happen, it's no surprise that the Discovery Channel store was an abysmal failure. Why? Why? Discovery Channel! Discovery Channel, why? Okay, just eat your food. Eat, eat, everyone eat the food. The company tried to create a retail market to sell Discovery Channel merchandise. Unfortunately, the small retail chain of less than 20 locations lasted less than a dozen years before going under. As of 2023, even Discovery's online store has closed. There's nothing like the gift of Discovery. Number 8. Zany Brainy David Schlesinger was an entrepreneur frustrated by a lack of brick-and-mortar stores for educational toys. He started the retail chain Zany Brainy in 1991 to bridge that gap. Zany Brainy's products specialized in developmental education through play. They sold puzzles, books, audio tapes and CDs, toy trains, and learning software. The individual stores also offered in-store workshops, concerts, and book signings. <laughs> Though the retailer was eventually purchased by FEO Schwartz, it never really found a long-term market. Zany Brainy filed for bankruptcy protection in 2001. Less than two years later, all its locations shut down. Number 7. Models. Memories begin now. You gotta go to Moe's. After 140 years in business, Modell Sporting Goods learned the hard way that not everyone has to go back to Moe's. Morris A. Modell, a Jewish immigrant from Hungary, 
founded the sporting goods store in Manhattan in 1889. Over the next century, his descendants grew the business into a profitable chain, operating over 150 stores in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. By 2014, however, rival Dick's Sporting Goods had sued the company. They accused CEO Mitchell Modell of wearing a disguise to learn Dick's retail secrets. By mid-2020, every Modell's store had closed, attempting to rebrand as an online-only business. If it has anything to do with baseball, it's probably on sale at Modell's. Finish with the mid sign already. Come on, the mid, the mid. Modell's Sporting Goods, top brand names, low, low prices. Number six, Movie Gallery. Movie Gallery was founded in 1985 in the middle of the ascension of home video. By the mid-1990s, the company launched an aggressive campaign of expansion. They added new franchises, bought out the competition, and built new stores. In 2005, they merged with competitor Hollywood Video to become the second largest video chain in North America. They had reached 4,700 stores in the US and Canada with more than $2.5 billion in revenue, but it all went downhill from there. We're going downhill and I can't reach the break! The rise of video on demand and streaming services destroyed movie gallery and Hollywood video just as it had with Blockbuster. By 2010, even the contents of the corporate headquarters were auctioned off. Number 5. Pier 1 The ripple effects of major global catastrophes can spread into every aspect of life. The Great Depression, Great Recession, and the pandemic all caused global shifts in consumer habits. In an adapt-or-die world, even large and powerful retailers fall victim to global trends. Tell that to the folks at Pier 1. In establishment, I'm no longer allowed inside. Pier 1 had risen to national prominence in the furniture and home decoration space. By January 2020, the business was struggling, and they announced the closure of almost half of their locations. The pandemic was the final nail in Pier 1's bespoke coffin. After all the stores shut for good, retail e-commerce ventures, Rev, acquired the company. Rev has a pension for buying dying brands and pivoting to e-commerce. Unfortunately, in spring 2023, Rev announced that it too may go bankrupt. Number four, Kmart. Inspired by a meeting with the founder of Woolworths, businessman S.S. Craig's founded his first big box department store in 1899. The first Kmart branded store opened in 1962 in Michigan. The next 30 years saw almost exponential growth, by 1990, it was the second largest retailer in America, behind only Sears, and unfortunately struggled throughout the 90s and early 2000s, collapsing and merging with Sears. But we own Kmart now. No. So why are you dressed like we do? Both brands suffered further decline over the next decade, until Kmart underwent its second bankruptcy and sold off its stores. By 2019, virtually all Kmart locations were shuttered. As of April 2022, there were only nine Kmarts left in the world. Tell him, Ray. Kmart sucks. <laughs> I see. Number three, Lord & Taylor. Lord & Taylor was the oldest retailer in America, having been founded in 1824 when John Quincy Adams was president. For almost two centuries, Lord & Taylor rose to become synonymous with luxury branded clothing. Six different parent companies saw Lord & Taylor through two world wars, the Great Depression and the Great Recession. Unfortunately, the company could not survive the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Retail locations were closed in March of 2020 and reopened by July, but the damage had already been done and Lord & Taylor filed for bankruptcy in August. I declare bankruptcy! In 2022, the brand relaunched under new management as an e-commerce luxury retailer. Number two, Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond, as of June 2023, is at the tail end of a long, slow, painful demise. The company shifted from a small retail chain of local stores to a megastore chain in 1985. It reached over a billion dollars in sales in 1999, and there were over 1,100 locations by 2011. Let's see what we got on hot tips, all right? Whoa. The new bath mats are in. <laughs> One more thing. We got a serial rapist in Crown Heights. I... Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. That's from my other job. Ignore that. Forget that. Well, don't ignore it. If you live in Crown Heights, uh, you know, walk in pairs. Declining profits led to a big shakeup in 2019. Investment firms purged the CEO from his perch and restructured the board of directors. They accused the company of nepotism and poor management. The pandemic proved to be a fatal blow for Bed Bath & Beyond, pulling the trigger on the starter gun for store closures. After limping along for several years, the company announced the full closure of all stores by July 2023. Number 1. The Limited 
The Limited was an Ohio-based clothing brand that became a mall staple in the 1980s and 90s. At the height of its economic might, The Limited acquired popular brands like Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, and Abercrombie & Fitch. A sub-brand, The Limited 2, was spun off in 1987, catering to young and tween girls. Limited 2. Everything a girl could ever want for back to school. Both store chains did well with hundreds of stores around the country. The Limited 2 brand didn't even make it a decade, merging with Justice in 1996 and going defunct in 2009. Its parent company didn't fare much better. The bulk of the company was sold to a private equity firm in 2007. By 2017, all physical locations went out of business. All right, well, that's going to do it for this fascinating look at all the many things that don't exist anymore. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I definitely did. I've been Matt from Watch Mojo, and I'll see you next time. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.